on this episode of Learn With A Classic, the SU AED. Welcome back to Learn With A Classic and if you're new to my channel, I hope that you stick around and consider subscribing. I put out new videos every week on some great Jaguar and classic horror related content. So you can navigate to my channel down below, check out some of my previous videos. And if you like them and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you won't miss any future videos. So in today's video, I'm going to go through this. It might look kind of strange if you've never seen one before. But if you've ever owned a 70s Jag, you're pretty familiar with these, especially an XJ6. The SUAED, or the Auxiliary Enrichment Device. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It's an Auxiliary Enrichment Device. So it sits in between your SU carbs. So it's Auxiliary Enrichment. It's basically a choke and device. Well, it's a thing. So it is technically a third carb. So you have your two main carburetors. Then when the engine is cold, this thing kicks on. And it sent, supplies a mixture through here, like it's sent past the carbs into the engine of rich extra fuel to let the engine start when it's cold. It also provides more air so you get a higher raised idle. So it's an automatic choke basically, but it's completely mechanical. Some of the earlier ones were electric. We're going to go through those in a future video like on my 1966 S-Type. There's an earlier version, the electric one. This one's completely mechanical inside. It's all done with heat that comes through here in the bottom. A bunch of bimetals and some other weird little things in here. But don't worry, we're going to go through this whole thing on my bench to see how everything works inside. These tend to get a pretty bad rep. And technically, is it really deserved? I don't think so. You can get them to work really well and be a really nice smooth warm up. However, when they don't work the way they should, when they're broken or set up incorrectly, they are terrible. They can flood your engine like crazy. They can make it impossible to start. Um, they can be pretty awful. So that they've gotten a bad rep is completely understandable. That's because they're pretty complicated. But after you've seen this video, you'll get a pretty good understanding of how they work inside. And if you have one, you can probably learn to set yours up correctly as well. So let's head over to the workbench and have a look at it. So here's the AED on the bench. This particular one is from a 1975 XJ6. They used this model on 70s Jaguars with the six cylinder engine and SU carburetors. A very similar model was used on the Rover P5B I believe with that V8. It's a very similar one, at least the housing was the same, but the internals are a little different. So it sits in between the carbs and I'll grab a SU carb here. So it sits in between the carbs like this. It's mounted up with the same plates here. And this pipe goes up here. So it feeds this fuel mixture into the carb on the engine side of the butterfly so it's independent of the throttle on the SU carburetor. And it's basically a third carb. So it's only used for cold starts to get a higher idle and a richer mixture for the cold engine. And as the engine warms up, this thing should slowly shut down and then completely shut off the supply of fuel and air through here. So one way you can always test if one of these is working is if you start up the engine and it starts and you come out, this pipe is going to get really cold. You might even see ice forming on it because you have fuel and air mixture going through here. As the engine warms up, this pipe should get warmer and warmer. And when this is completely shut off, this pipe will be nice and warm. That's how you, one way of knowing that it's actually working. So you might be wondering how this thing is getting air. Where is the air coming in? It's not from the side here. It's underneath this pipe here. So when it sits on the engine, the pipe goes down here, under the carbs, and around the back of the engine, over to the exhaust manifold. So it gets hot air over there. There's a little filter there. It goes around the engine and up here. So let's start taking this thing apart and I'll show you different parts inside. So this I just slid on to show. That goes off easily. This is a little plastic or I think it might be Bakelite even cover. 
and then you have a float chamber here on the side so you have incoming fuel here there's a little filter in here that filters the fuel and then that's an overflow with a needle and seat stick in there unlike a normal carburetor the fuel and air mixture changes inside here depending on a few things depending on the engine vacuum pulled here from the engine depending on the temperature of the incoming air here so there is a lot that happens inside here so we're going to start by taking off the top cover and I'll show you the insides here one thing to think about when you take one of these apart is to hold it a thumb down kind of hard on it this might sound weird but there's a lot of springs inside here and these are getting kind of old now so these screws where they go into the body you it's pretty easy to strip out those threads if you're not careful so hold everything down tight and don't let it go until you've unscrewed the screws all the way now you can lift off the top and let's start by having a look inside this top here I'll remove the screws so here you have a piece of bimetal in there, so two pieces of metal against each other. So they will expand and contract at different rates, so this will move up and down with temperature. So this whole thing is controlled by different bimetals. So that's why it's heat controlled, and that's really how it works inside. There's no electronics, nothing at all. It's all mechanical. It's quite brilliant actually how it works. So here is that top bimetal. There's a second one here as well. It's in here. This is lifts up and down, so we'll move this to the side for now. And I'll carefully remove this gasket here. So here are the two main components. You have a needle in here. This you can push up and down. So this is just a needle that threads down uh, into a jet and that sets your mixture. So this is the main mixture adjustment. So turning it clockwise, you get a weaker mixture. Turning it anti-clockwise, you get a richer mixture. So this is where you set the mixture on the carburetor. And this over here is what opens and closes this air port here, or basically the air coming in. So there's a metal disc under here, you'll see in a little bit, that sits on top of a hole. And it's basically like a throttle disc. So the more this lifts up, the more air and fuel gets let through. Let's take off these two screws here and open up the next part of this carb. Okay, now we can lift off this part as well and have a look at that needle. So here is the mixture needle. It goes into a little jet down there and I can show a little bit later. It is spring loaded here because while you're warming up, the mixture does change and the carburetor with all these little bimetals here, it pushes on the needle here and it will push it down and that will lean out the mixture and then when it's all the way down it will basically turn off the flow of fuel that goes through here and here is that little for lack of a better word throttle disc you can see it sits over here that's where the air and fuel mixes and goes out through here so when everything is cold and it needs to start this thing is pretty open it will let in air and fuel go through there as everything warms up and the choke turns off, this will get pushed down by the bimetals and it will seal against here and then everything will be turned off. Incoming air comes in through this little flap here. It's spring loaded so it can only go one way so air can only go in through it and not out the other way. And we're going to turn the carburetor over and we're going to open up down here because this is one of the most important parts and if yours isn't working right this is probably the main part that's broken. There's a diaphragm in here and it's very important that that diaphragm is not broken or leaking air or leaking fuel. So we're going to open that up and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. There's a little spring that sits in here and here is that little diaphragm. So carefully take it out and there's also a little tube right there that you can set to the side. You don't want to lose that. So this is a very important part that you check that this thing is complete, that it's not torn anywhere or ripped, and that it can still move up and down like a diaphragm. Thankfully this one still looks perfectly fine, and everything looks really nice and clean in here. There's that jet, so I'm just going to set the needle in there to show you what it looks like. So there's that needle going through the jet. Now if I pull it back here you can see what this is how open it is when it's fully open. See there's quite a bit of air around there and it can let in fuel. 
And now as I let it go, it closes and it's basically closed all the way. So the last thing we're going to have a look at is the float chamber over here. It's the simplest part. It's just like a float chamber on any carb. However, on the AED, it's extremely important that this is working well because for the most time that the engine is running, this thing is not operating, which means there's fuel pressure going in here, but you don't want that fuel to go into the engine. You don't want it to leak out anywhere. So it's very important that everything seals up very nicely in here. So you got to open up and make sure that everything looks nice and clean, that the float doesn't have any holes in it, and that it looks like it's not going to leak. And also have a look at the needle, make sure the tip looks really good on it. Also make sure the gasket around here looks good. So let's lift this up. Here's what that looks like. And that gasket came with it. Move that to the side. Here's that little needle. And this one has a great Viton tip. So that one's going to seal really well. Everything looks pretty new in here, so there's no reason that shouldn't work. And it looks really nice and clean inside there. So no problems here so far. If you replaced all the parts here and you find that this thing is overflowing, it can be adjusted. The float height can be adjusted. So when you order the new parts, there will be instructions on how to adjust it. You basically bend this piece of metal here, but there will be instructions supplied when you buy new parts here for how to set the float level. So those were all the components inside the AED. They've actually packed a lot in here. It is pretty complicated. But once you've laid it out here, I think it's pretty straightforward in how it all works. And it's pretty clever. And there's nothing really wrong with it. As long as you set up everything correctly, you can get it working just fine. So I'm going to assemble this now almost all the way. We're going to not put on this top. And then I'll show you what adjustments you can do initially when you set it up. If you've just taken it apart and you want to get it running again. A few tips when you're putting it back together. The whole flow chamber, that's pretty straightforward. That just goes back on. The diaphragm has to go on a certain way. So this part here needs to go towards the jet. And the part here is the bigger flatter is what the spring sits on. So that goes like this over that little tube. And you have the spring in here on the back plate. So once again, this thing is spring loaded. So hold it flat down with your thumb all the way when you're screwing it in so you don't strip out any threads. With that in place, you can turn it over Make sure that the little flap is in place and the gasket is on top of it. Take this part with the needle, carefully put it in the hole. Now that you know the diaphragm is below there, you do want to make sure that you don't puncture it. So set it down squarely, make sure it's all in place. The screw with the weird little washers goes up here and the other one that's normal goes over there. So I'll tighten those now. Now you have almost everything back together, you can start measuring a few things. So if you haven't had this thing on the car before, you don't know how it ran, if it was too rich or not, you can set some of these in, let's say the initial settings, which will get the car started. One of those is to set the mixture. So you can measure the distance from the top here down to here. It's supposed to be 8.5 millimeter is the initial setup to get one of these running. This was running on the car before, not that well, but the whole car wasn't running well. But let's see, so that was, that's about eight millimeters. So I'm gonna leave this one at eight millimeters because the car did start when it was cold before and then adjust it when it's all back on the car again. Here's that next bimetal thing that you need to put in place. However, before this gets put in place, you need to put this gasket on. And this part can be a little fiddly. If you can see, there's a slot in there. And that slot needs to go under that spring. Let's see if I can show it on camera. If I twist it around, you can see how it's under the spring there. That's where it goes, and it sits over here. And then you have the last, the top housing with the bimetal in place. That goes over here. And then you have the two last screws. The shorter one goes up here, and then the longer one goes back there. All right, now it's all back together. If your AED has been untouched by previous owners or mechanics, you will have little brass plugs over here. Mine are unfortunately missing. 
you see what they look like, it's like one right there. Here are the two other settings that you have. This one is the idle screw. So that's the main adjustment for the idle basically. So if you start the car and the mixture is right but the car is idling too low or too high, it's supposed to be about a thousand RPM. You can take a tiny little screwdriver in there, clockwise will lower the idle, and that clockwise will raise the idle, so you can set the idle right there. But that should only be done within the first minute or so of the car running because after that everything will start heating up and things will change. So you only have about a minute to set that. And then there's the last adjustment that should basically never ever be touched. It's the needle lift here. Unless someone else has messed with it or you mess with it, don't touch that. However, if you have messed with it, you need to reset it. I'm not sure if you can see, but there is a tiny, tiny little screw in there. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't. I mean, I can't even see it, but I promise there is a screw in there with a hole in the middle. So you can get a small, small, small little drill or something down there and measure the lift. So the setting is 45 thousandths of an inch lift at 20 degrees room temperature. If you find that this is incorrect, then you can turn it clockwise to reduce needle lift and anti-clockwise to increase needle lift. But please don't touch that if you don't really have to. Usually the main settings that you need to set is the main mixture and the main adjustment here for the idle. And everything else usually works just fine. So this thing is pretty cool inside. There's a lot going on and there's a lot that can go wrong. So definitely if this is not working correctly on your car and it keeps flooding out all the time, get a rebuild kit and try rebuilding it. You can actually get them to work really well. Some people replace them with a manual version on top. I've done that as well on an old car. And yes it works, but it doesn't work as well as a properly set up one of these because it still utilizes the bottom half of this, it just takes away the top half and the top half is pretty much the reliable bit. It's the bottom half with the diaphragm and all the adjustments for the mixture that is the difficult part. So if you have one, it doesn't work, try rebuilding it because you'll probably be pleased with how well they do actually work. Yes, you can also get complete manual choke kits for the early carbs like I have the HS8s. You can get uh, complete choke kits for them to actually move the needles down and everything. Or I mean they move the jets down and races the idle and does everything manually. That can be done as well. But you can get these to work pretty well also. So if you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. And let me know down below, what's your experience with the AED? Has it been good or bad or have you never seen one before? Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Lumo with a Classic. I'll see you soon.